White Witch. That's what we're making today. So if you've been around on this channel, then you will have seen me make this soap several times. I'm just doing my lie here. So I am restocking again as the shelves are looking pretty empty from before. So what are you flushing up? Oh, nearly out of battery. Okay, I'll be quick. So White Witch is a white soap, cocoa line, white top, peaks on the top. And it smells like patchouli and geranium. And this is an essential oil soap, so let's get it going. Okay, before we start, a couple of things, and then we'll get into some conversation and start. Uh, I'll start talking to you about what's on my mind today. But first, just get this out of the way. I bought some new guitar wires. If you watched my how to repair a wire on a soap cutter video. I did mention in there that you needed a 22 gauge wire and so I bought a load of these, well a pack of them, I think you get six in here, so I bought a pack and they just came, so 22p, so this is Ernie Ball custom gauge and I'll show you the size, so this is definitely, definitely the right size that I was looking for, this was uh, something I saw how to make a soap cutter, there's like a blog post somewhere, so Someone posted this size, this size, oh, my accent. Somebody posted about using this size and I think it's correct. So I've got these new ones. There are several different gauges, but this seems to be the right thickness. So I just wanted to uh, point that out because some of them are really flimsy and then some of them are just too thick. So uh, that's what she said. So, I just wanted to make a point of showing you these because they are definitely the right ones. They feel stronger, but not too heavy and not too thin. Okay, so I'm just going to stick blend my lie into this. I've got a little layer of flakiness on the top there, not too bad. And I'm also working with a slightly higher percentage of oils for this mould because some of my bars were coming in slightly underweight so I had to change the weight so I like my bars to be five ounces and no less so I've just upped the oils and a little bit of the lye and so I've just recalculated so it's correct for the mould that I'm using which is this big one behind me here I'm using my big one again today so I'm making white witch so I'm just going to stick blend this and I'll be back and we'll start the uh, colouring actually <laughs> I have here my white which I should have just mixed in to my oil but I'm going to put it in now because this is just a plain white soap. That might look like a lot, but we're making a big batch of soap. So let's stick blend this in. Cop that as well. So I would normally have put that white straight into my oils before I added the lye, but I was late. But it's actually worked out fine. It would work out better doing it like that than it would be adding it after I'd reached trace as just a powder. If I added it after I'd reached trace, I would have added it mixed in with some water. But it was fine like that to mix in. So I'm going to continue stick blending until I reach a light trace and then I'll add my essential oils. Okay, I'm nowhere near trace yet because this stick blender seems to be on a go slow. It does take a lot longer using this one than my regular Kenwood. I might have to go back to the Kenwood, you know. It drives me a bit mad. Okay, I'm going to slowly stir in my essential oil. So you can see that's very dark. That's from the patchouli that I'm using. Hands up who likes patchouli. Not thumbs down if you don't. <laughs> That's mixed with a nice geranium oil. Smidge of geranium because it's so blooming strong that if I was to use more, it would just smell like geranium. It's such a strong oil. You have to be so careful with that one. It's nice as a blend, but actually as an oil on its own, I'm not a huge fan of it. But with patchouli, it works. And it takes away that 
earthiness of the patchouli to a point where it's not so biker jacket even though I like the biker jacket smell okay I'm just gonna stick blend a bit more until I reach a point where I can pour the first half okay okay I just had to get my other stick blender out because I've lost the will to live halfway through that it was taking forever it's still quite runny now so it'll have to set up for me to do the second layer so just pour the first one and then we'll have a little chat so today's topic of conversation is going to be the tax man so i've just been doing my tax return which i don't like to do every year it's not a very nice thing to, have to do but it gives a good reflection of how my business is doing so you know there is that and i've done pretty good last year but i'm just sort of thinking about the tax man and how much of our hard-earned money he takes and how excuse me while i pour how they take too much i feel from us and they squander it on things that we don't agree with you know like war weapons and things like that so when you start to really think about the government and what they do with your hard-earned tax money then yeah i don't agree <laughs> with where they put it. I would agree with them if they were feeding the poor or looking after people less fortunate, but they don't. They don't, they don't do enough of it. And so, as a taxpayer, I think I'm entitled to an opinion. Well, I don't think I know I am. <laughs> and I don't like what they do with our money. Just every year it gets to me and I think, what are you doing with it? You know, I'm going to have to keep paying you all this money for all my hard work when you're not putting it into the hands of people that deserve it. And I would, if you would let me keep it, I would then share it and give it to people who were less fortunate. But you know that they're not going to do that. So, hmm, I'm having a bit of a rant about the uh, ways in which they spend our hard-earned taxpayer money. It's just not on and in this country in the UK if you earn say you earn well okay there's a bra there's brackets there's tax brackets for how much tax you pay so up to earnings of 37 and a half thousand pounds a year then you pay 20% tax on those earnings but if you went over £37,500 a year, you then pay 40% tax, but you'll pay 20% up to £37,500, and anything over that you pay 40%. Well, 40% is a lot of money, isn't it? If you were sort of um, earnings in excess of £100,000, which would be lovely, <laughs> let's face it, um, then your tax bill, or tax payments through your company that you work for would be colossal i know a few people that earn a, a decent wage like that and they're all they all ain't happy about it you know because it's sort of you look at your your wage slip at the end of the month i don't get a wage slip i'm self-employed but it still works the same way when i'm doing my tax return and then they're asking me to pay them however many thousands of pounds they want um it's the same thing, you know, it's the same deal. You sort of think, well, why should I give you all that? Because you squander it. <laughs> you don't do good things. Now, let's not forget they've helped everybody through the uh, COVID rubbish, but they haven't helped everybody to the best of their ability. There's still people really suffering, especially the ones who are on the front line and especially the ones who were already without a job or you know people already suffering out there i just don't think they have the best interests of the people and every time it comes around to this time of year i'm always a bit like i don't want to give you that because if it was left to me to do something with this money you want me to give to you i would do really good things and i would help people in need i really really truly truly would it's just we should be given a choice you know I mean, they could track it and see what you did do with it. That would be good. 
But I think something could change, or something should change. I don't think they should be in charge of everyone's hard-earned money to play with it as they wish, you know? Leave your comments below and let me know your thoughts. <laughs> we obviously need a governing body, but that is HMRC. But at the same time, I just don't like the way that the government handle the money and what they do with it. It's just, uh, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not a fair system. Anyway, I need to stick around that a bit more before I can do the topping. So I'm gonna take this, pause you for a second and I'll come back and we'll uh, talk about something else. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I'm just gonna scoop this onto the top and we'll talk about what I've been doing in my spare time. So we finished watching Star Trek Discovery, which was great. We're waiting for the next season to come. And I've also been watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> yep, you heard that correctly. I do watch trash like that. Although the last couple of days I've not been able to because I uh, had a water bottle leak in my bag that held my tablet and my tablet got covered in water. So I'm just waiting to see if it's going to recover. It did turn on earlier, but it's gone It's gone really crazy. And I'm thinking, oh, no, no, no. That cost me £200. And I loved it. And I can't really afford to go and spend another £200 on a tablet. So where is me at the moment? I bought that thing so I wouldn't have to buy a new phone. Like a fancy phone. And I bought myself a new phone that wasn't too fancy. And now my tablet's broken. So I should just have to wait. I've got my laptop, so all's not lost, but oh, sad. I has a sad. Anyway, hopefully it will, it will work eventually. If it doesn't, I'll just have to save up and get another one. But on top of that, my sister Tracy, who passed away in 2019, had a Super Nintendo. And when she passed, we had to clean out all her things. And I took the Super Nintendo. Now, until last week, I hadn't even turned it on to see if it even worked. It's just been sat in my bedroom under my TV and I haven't turned it on. I'm just very gently putting this topping on here. I'll bring you in a little bit. So yeah, I hadn't turned it on, and then last week I turned it on and the blooming thing works. So the only game that I'd got was Tasmania, which, if you know the snares, is just a 16-bit system. The graphics are really, really bad. So when you play Tasmania, it's, um, let's put it in a, let's rephrase that. When you play Tasmania and you're of a certain age, <laughs> And your eyesight isn't what it was, it's quite hard to see what the hell you're doing on the screen. But it worked and I thought, I'm going to get myself Donkey Kong Country. That was always my favourite game ever. So I found Donkey Kong Country on eBay and I paid this guy 15 quid for a copy of it. It's not a copy, it's the real deal, but it didn't, just didn't have a box. So I thought, I'll buy myself Donkey Kong Country. And I bought it it and it came and I've been playing it ever since. I've even been going upstairs in the evenings and leaving Matt to watch the TV so that I can go and play Donkey Kong. I'm obsessed. All the music and all the screens. I mean I used to sit for hours at home in my 20s when I was living at home with my mum and I would play Donkey Kong Country every single day. And people used to come round, like friends would come round, and we would just sit and play Donkey Kong all day and all night until I could hardly see. <laughs> but I'm so enjoying it. So that's what I'm using uh, as a distraction at the moment from the day. And I love it. I said to the Matt last night, he was having a bath, and he said, I'm going to go and have a bath. So I said, okay, while I wait so I can have mine afterwards, I'll go and have a game. And then he came upstairs to lie on the bed with me. I said, would you like a go? And he said, no. 
so he's not really into playing games. We used to both play a lot of games. I've got like Nintendo GameCube, and after that we never ever bought another one because I wasn't really into all the um, the new systems. I, I didn't like the way, I, w I don't like things like that. I like old platform games, so I'm very old school. But um, now I've got my eyes on a Nintendo 64, so I might have to get myself one of those again. I did have one years ago, but whatever I did with that, I don't know. I must have sold it. But yeah, those old games, it's just lovely. So Donkey Kong Country, if you're a fan, thumbs up. <laughs> well, let me know your favourite games that you play. Because... I haven't been a gamer for years and when I saw that she'd got a SNES I was like oh I'll have that and then I'll have a look but I guess I suppose some part of me was too sad to even turn it on because you know I still have terrible days where I really really miss my sister and wish she was still here but I know that she's in a much better position now than she ever was before so I'm happy in that respect but um yeah, you never, ever, ever get over the loss of someone so close. You just don't. You get an easier ride the more time goes on, I found. But you still do have days of grief that take you into a world you don't want to be in, you know? I still have days like that. I just don't talk about it too much because I guess... You get through them, you know, so I don't feel like I always need to cry on someone. It's just, it just is what it is. When I cry, I cry. It just happens. You can't time it. <laughs> it could just happen anytime, anytime, any place. It's usually in my car when I'm driving or if I'm on a dog walk or sometimes when I'm at home and I just smell her or I miss her and it's just horrible. And I know everybody has to lose everybody in life. We all have to go through that. But it doesn't make it any easier sometimes. It, it, well, it can't actually, it does. It, it does. Knowing that other people ha actually go through this stuff inevitably, <laughs> we all do have that thing that has to happen in our lives. We have to lose people. Um, but preferably not siblings, you know, preferably not brothers and sisters. We all know we're going to lose our parents at some point and our grandparents, but when you lose someone that's around the same age, it, I just think it's so difficult to comprehend. And when you've known a person, I, I wasn't meaning for this video to go on like this, but, you know, now we're here. But when you've known the essence of a person and then they're no longer here, I think that that is is so so hard to deal with and I know there's other people out there that have dealt with the loss of sisters and brothers because you've all told me but um it's just it's something that you don't think will ever happen it's something you know inevitable with your parents you know that's going to happen but losing a brother or a sister you didn't know that was going to happen you didn't know that was going to occur in this lifetime so yeah it, it's like it shouldn't happen, you know. It's not supposed to happen. That's what we say, anyway. But I do deal with it. I deal with it in a good way now. I'm in a much better position than I was last year. And 2019, when it happened, was just a write-off for me, really. There was just... There were good days, but so many bad ones. And... Um, you just get through it time just sort of seems to heal the heart and I wouldn't want her to be in the position here still that she was when she was here so I take great thanks in knowing that she's better because let's face it most of us believe in something after if we didn't or if you don't then that's fair enough but I just couldn't go through life without having some kind of a faith you know I am a strong believer in the afterlife, as you probably already all know, since the conversation topics we've had before. But yeah, I wouldn't want her to be stuck in the life that she was living here. You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. You really, really wouldn't. You really wouldn't. 
So it's all good, you know, even though it's all sad still. But anyway, thanks to Tracy, I got a Super Nintendo <laughs> to play with. And I love it. I love it. And it's really making me laugh, actually, because we used to play that together. And some of the screens are really, really hard. You're like, oh, Lord, I forgot about this. End up effing and jeffing at the screen. <laughs> right, I'm going to just let this set before I do the tops. And I've got, I bought myself... Well, I bought in one of these big lollipop sticks that I use for waxing at home and um, I'm going to do my tops with that today and see how it turns out. So give me about five minutes or so to let that set up and then we'll go for it. Okay, I'm just going to mark out as best I can where these are going. I've already done it a bit, but I'm just going to do it a little bit more. There's an end piece there. So, I'm going to take my spatula, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to bring these in from this side. Like I would with a spoon, but it's just a straighter, straighter way of doing it, I guess. Okay. On there. I'm just going to put that on my penny, sorry. Mucky pup. Okay. Yeah, that pigeon going for it out there. So they should be slightly higher in this mould. That's what I was going for. And um, I think I've used an extra, I think it's about 400 grams in all, extra oils, something like that anyway. It's just um, to bring the weight up per bar to bang on weight. I think we were getting about five grams out and it needed to be better than that. Not acceptable. That's a different look for White Witch. I've not done it like this before, ever, ever, in all the years I've made it. It's only ever been... I'm going to bring it over a bit more because it needs to match the rest. The beauty part of working with this tool as well is you can just go over it, over and over again. Okay, so... I will be back to cut it tomorrow, see what we've got there. Hopefully it will be just fine. So there is White Witch with a slightly new design. It's only the top. It's only the top that's different to normal. Let's take those edges away, make tidy that up a bit. Right, it's time to go home and find Bridie, my little doggy. I'm going to take her for a little walk before we settle in for the evening. It's not been very nice weather. It's cold and wet at the moment. Okay, I'll be back sometime tomorrow. I'm going to actually have my hair trimmed and coloured tomorrow. Get rid of some of the greys. <laughs> so I will be back tomorrow afternoon and I will see you then. Ta-ta. Okie dokie, we're back to cut White Witch. So let me just get my splitter and hope it's strong enough to cut through this because it's been left for over a day, which is not ideal. I should have come in yesterday, but I didn't have time. So we're a little, uh, yeah, it could be a little hard to cut. I'm sure I'll be all right cutting the loaves. But I'm not sure about the individual bars. We'll have to wait and see what happens. There's the inside. And the top. Oh, 
just hope we don't break a string and I have to go and fix that. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping isn't going to happen because I have, yeah, I was thinking, oh, I need to get in and I'm, it's, yeah, way over, how many hours? Oh, way over sort of 32 hours since I've made this. It's quite a long time. Okay, so I think I'll chop that side this time because I can see a little gap there. So I'll just have to sort of trim off this edge because it's got some crinkly pattern, but it was better like that. Otherwise I would have had a weird uh, top there. So this end strip is obviously for my samples. It's quite a good chunk actually. Okay, so let me see then. Just put that there. So. Let me see if we're going to be safe enough to cut it on the tank. Without it breaking this little thin wire here. If it does break, I'll just have to fix it, but whatever. Let's see how we can do this. So get you in the get you in the frame. Pray for me. If I go really slow, it might be okay. Sorry, it'd be like paint, watching paint dry, but I don't want to risk breaking this wire right now. If I can help it. I will change the wire once I've got through this if I can. It's very hard. <laughs> Push down this way. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just uh, I've got to be careful. There we go, oh my lord, panic stations. Okay, so that's what white witch looks like inside. So it's just plain with that cocoa lime, which I'm sure you all know, because you've seen me make it before. Yeah, that wire. <laughs> So they should be slightly higher than usual than these bars because I upped that recipe ever so slightly to get them on weight. So I'll get my scale out now and we'll have a look. I have a trade scale. Trade scales, let me see. We got yay so they should be a hundred and forty grams but these they do have to have a slight trim so they're 154 at the moment which is okay because we're gonna be trimming off so they should all be on weight that one's 152 so yeah with that trimmed off and after curing and I usually you like would lose about four grams in weight so we'll be all right there thank the lord okay turn that off okie doke i'll just chop the other little piece and then i shall do the others off camera just in case the wire the wire goes again which is okay on small chunks it's just not okay on large ones it's going to be tricky to get this done but at least I've got some better wires now. So I'm gonna go and then I'll be back sometime next week with some more videos. I've got lots of soap to make again and some different ones and I've placed orders with some suppliers for different fragrances. So that'll be a bit more exciting. I won't be doing exactly the same ones as I always do. There'll be some that I'm bringing back from before, but um, yeah, that's gone really weak, that wire. I'll have to change it. Okay, so I'll be back for some more soap making very soon. I'm just going to change that wire before I have a mishap. Okay, see you soon. Ta-ta.